Got that side, then you gotta get this side. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hallelujah! 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 Amen! Jesus name! In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. I tell you what, this place is something else. Amen. You know why it's something else? Because God's here. And He's strong enough to chase everything else away. All the booger men that come and try to rest and rule and reign in our head, He's going to chase that booger man away. He's going to chase her back to the booger man's house. You know who the booger man is? The devil. You know where the booger man's house is? Where? 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 Amen. I ain't going there to you. I'm going to tell you what, let's take as many, if his treasure, his trophies away from me. That's right, amen. Yeah. And let's take him into the kingdom of God, amen. Yeah. For his joy and his peace and all the good stuff. Man, who would want to go to hell where all the bad stuff is? Yeah. Not me. <laughs> well, you know, it just seems like though some of us kind of like the, the devil's wares. How many of you know what I'm talking about there? They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the people that know their God are going to be are going to be and what? Do exploits. Hey, man, man, man. We got a little different night tonight. It's going to be kind of an interesting night. Amen. And uh, of course, you know the freshness, the newness of God is new every morning. Every day we get a fresh portion. Every moment of every day. But we just have to allow Him to show us that. And then once you, you do, through it all, through the battles, through the struggles, through the ups and downs, and through realizing all things, everything that happens, He works it together for the good. You know, it's so easy when we get out of the way. Shut, I wish we could shut this thing off. And let it just be tuned in to God. You know what I'm talking about? Because then... You just realize, hey, like a dumb tree. Duh. The tree, that's what it's saying to us. Hey, I got every God's got to be in perfect order. Got to be doing exactly what he wants me to do. And I like this. Amen. What's the matter with you? Yeah. If he could talk to us, that's what he'd say to us. Help me understand what I'm saying. But because of the devil playing in our minds, ruling and reigning us for years, we just, we have trouble. I still want to do this. Mine. No. <laughs> In fact, some of us like to, <clears throat> some of us, he and she like to rebel. You know, the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as antiquity and idolatry. Okay, but the people know their God are going to know that. They're not going to be corrupt, corrupted by flatteries by the devil telling us all this wonderful stuff we want to hear and try to flatter us, tell us that we're something. And his wares are something. They ain't. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to get into this thing. Pastor Ken. Alright, praise the Lord. Can I get those to come forward? No, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's get into this thing by our giving tonight. Amen. I want to tell you that uh, each person here is a miracle of God. Amen. Each person here is valuable in the sight of God. And uh, there's all kinds of people out there that need their sh know the love of Christ. Amen. And we, how many of uh, you want to share the love of Christ with people? Amen? Amen. Yes. That's what Church on the Street's all about. We get to be a part of this by our giving, by uh, continuing with our finances to reach out to the Lord. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if anyone needs an envelope, just raise your hand and uh, there you go. There's someone right there. Amen. We'll just give from our heart, support the ministry, and uh, let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for each and every day. We thank you for this time that we have together. And Lord, I just pray that you bless this offering, bless your people as they give. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. 
Seems like there's some uh, <clears throat> lukewarmers, flakes. Not too zealous. People on this side. Not all those crazy ones are on the other side. Amen. 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 You know, God has chosen and called each one of us to do different things. This isn't a matter of us just doing it. It's that simple. Now, God will be the one that trains us. We don't have to worry about how we're going to do it, you know, what if I don't know how to do it. Well, then God will show you. In fact, you're better off if you don't know how to do it. Because you didn't call Him. He called you. He chose us, ordained us to go forth and for fruit. And then our fruit shall remain. Then when we're doing His will, when He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He's going to give it to you. So, this is kind of neat. We got all kinds of people here. We got neophytes, which means brand new baby Christians. And then as they start to, we start to grow in the grace of knowledge, some of them get a little bit more mature. Now, the interesting thing is, how on earth can you preach to the first grade and the eighth graders at the same time? The immaturity... No, that, but the, that's not a bad thing. It's just we got to grow. We all got to... Then, the ones that have been around for a long, long time, I have so many people say, I, I, I got to go hear that same old stuff again. And I just look at them, I say, you doing it? Because when you're doing it, it's fresh. Each and every day. I'll tell you what, the Word of God is alive and well. Uh, you can read it a million times, but it's still. Every time you read it, it seems like... God meets you where you are, whether you're in kindergarten or you're, you think you're a, a Bible scholar. It makes no difference because God's going to meet you there. Amen? Okay. Well, he puts something in my heart. He always has. And in fact, i got so many things going on up here I'd like to do, but got to wait on God. He's given me a lot of visions and so forth. One of them simply is follow his command. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, or make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In other words, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I'm with you. To the very end of the age. Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about building disciples. So God kind of put it in my heart about the Green Beret. If the army can do it, and the, and the, Jari, and the Marines, no. If all the service can do it, Navy SEAL and so forth, why can't we do it? So God put it in our hearts just to start this Green Beret thing. Now we got people here that are even in the Green Beret that are just brand new Christians and some of them are a little further along. But it doesn't make any difference. Amen? Now, one of the things, well, a couple things that we've kind of put in place, I just want to let you know what some of the requirements are. Number one, work out twice a week. Yes. Number two, pray at least 30 minutes a day. Yes. <laughs> Number three, read the Bible. Yes. Three, cha three and a quarter chapters a day. Number four, now this is kind of a cop-out, but it's not. Witness into it at least one person. Take the trouble off this a little bit. We got a brand new mic, so we're, that's why it's doing what it's doing. This is a good one. This is short. It's one that... And the reason we got this thing, so on Sundays, we'll be preaching here, and they're going to have a mic over there. So, you guys, how you doing over there? Yeah! And then they'll be able to tell us. Praise the Lord. Okay, witnessing to one person a week. How many have done any of these? This is on a daily basis. Nice, you know, you should, if you started reading the Bible, the first of this year, your, your chapters, how many, it should be about 26 or 27 chapters that you've already read. Not caught up. In fact, I'm one ahead. Just follow, follow around here. Follow what's in the bulletin. It's all there. It'll tell you what to do and how you do it. If you get behind, you're going to, it's too much, you say. But if you, don't, if, if you stay up with it, it's not. Okay. Witness in one person a week. Scripture memorization. We're a little behind on that, but that's okay. Attend outreaches at least two a week. Develop your own ministry. Now, God will put that in your heart. Where's that crazy Michael at? 
He over. Come here, man, real quick. Right. Not only is he doing that, but he, he, he plays the part. He is the part. Look at him. He dresses the part. He's camouflaged, waiting for the, the sinners to come by so he can ambush them. Thank you, Michael. Okay, develop your own ministry, whether it's music, whether it's teaching, or whether it's preaching, whatever it is. Do that. Fasting. Not slowing. Fasting. You know, you know, one of our models is fat. But it's faithful, accountable, and teachable. Some people got it wrong. Oh. I gotta go faster than that so I can get fat. <laughs> faithful, accountable, and teaching. Develop your own ministry. Now, we fast possibly one day a week maybe three meals that one day and then at the end of the month maybe three days in order and, you know consecutive and then discipling one person how many of you just got somebody you're just really really working with we all need to do that discipling one person okay so we've got some green berets and a green barrette it's going to be Sharon tonight so, Luis, come here. Oh. Yeah. Would you get somebody to move this, please, and then get your troops in action? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's good right there. All right, now get your troops in action. All right, raise the tension. On stage. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Praise the Lord. So guess who's preaching tonight? The green bread, the green breath. I mean, the, 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 the green bread. Oh my God, I got twisted on that. No, that's kind of neat. So, Aaron, are you ready to go? All right, Father God, I love you and I thank you and I praise you for everything you bless us with, Father God. Everything you do in our lives, Father God. I ask that, that you just let this whole this whole moment, Father God, just be about you, Father God. Let your Holy Spirit flow through me. Let these words be your words, not my words, Father God. I love you and I thank you and I praise you. Christ, I'm going pray. Amen. Amen.
how many of you guys want to know that God can teach you through absolutely anything? Amen. Absolutely anything. So, so I'm sitting there and I'm watching, I'm watching the Avengers, man. <laughs> I'm watching the Avengers this week and God's telling me, he's like, he said, the enemy's big, man. The enemy's big, man. He's like, he's like, you gotta stop being individuals. You gotta stop being separated. And you gotta unify right now. And you gotta unify and you gotta destroy because those precious babies are out there. Those precious babies are out there. Those precious children are out there right now. And they need some saving and they need some deliverance. And they need you to come over there. Each and every one of you guys were brought out of darkness. Each and every one of you guys. I wanna know you're special. You're special, man. You're special. Each and every one of you guys are special. Walking, talking, miracles of God. Each one of you guys are special. Each one of you guys are special. You gotta tell yourself that God's not mad at you. God, God doesn't want to destroy you. God wants you to unify with your brothers and sisters. In 2017, right now, there's gonna be a time where every single man and every single woman that's a Christian starts to unify. Because we got an enemy right now that wants to kill and destroy each and every one of us. And I'm gonna tell you, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you don't like somebody or, or you, they hurt your feelings or so on and so forth. I saw the most amazing miracle of God last night. We saw one of our dear disciples out there. And we saw her. She was just crushed and broken. Two of the girls saw her and they said, hey, what are you doing out here? She said, I'm just out here. And she just keeps on popping up and popping up. They said, don't you know we love you? Don't you know we love you? And then Sarah comes out of the van. <laughs> she sees her. She says, what's up, dude? <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing the love of Christ just go. And, and I see one girl hug her. And I see another girl hug her. And I see another girl hug her. And that, next thing you know, they got this big old hug mound just around this girl. You know what I'm saying? Just loving her. I hear this weeping on the inside. Because when we're down, it doesn't matter. When we're down and we're destroyed, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you guys right now, man. Every time that you get mad at one of your brothers, one of your sisters, ask yourself, who's that coming from? Is that from God? Because I can tell you right now, it's not from God, man. It's from the booger man, right? <laughs> I love you guys I, I thank you father god for just everything you bless us with it's short and sweet tonight with me but uh, i just wanted just this representation this team everyone all the players in the game all the players in the game we need them because the enemy's big if we can unify if we can unify we just might have a chance we just might have a chance and that might happen okay that might happen again and again and again and again and again so can I get a Jesus? Jesus! There you go. Let's give them all that round of applause. Thank you guys so much. share with you that were kind of impressed upon my heart and I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to do so uh, so I hope all of you receive it um, and I hope that it inspires you yeah I was told to talk on what I know and something that I know is that God is good and that he loves us Amen. and that he wants the best for us and he has a purpose for each and every one of us and I want you guys to sit and think to yourselves what your purpose is what do you think God has called you to do? What do you think God has called you to become? Sit and ponder on that because he does have a purpose for every single one of us. Whatever it may be, I can testify to that. And I hope that I'm able to see what each and every one of you is called to become as I am learning what I am called to become. And uh, it's an amazing journey for sure. And I do know that one of the things that we are called to do is to rise, to rise up take our place as kings and queens take our place as warriors take our place as defenders 
take our place as uniters, yeah. take our place as <sighs> armies of God. Yeah. Armies of God. Yeah. I see these people lined up here professing in front of their peers. It's easy to go out there in front of people you don't know. That's, that's kind of easy, but to do it in front of your peers, that takes some courage and that takes some guts. And I am so proud of those individuals, to tell you the truth, because you know what? They're standing for something, and they're standing for the right thing. Praise God. Amen. So make a choice. Make a choice. What side are you going to be on? Amen. Where are you going to stand and be firm in that decision and glorify God the entire way? And I promise you that he will deliver you from whatever you are going through and he will rise you up to new levels that you cannot even begin to understand. And be proud of that fact in a humility that he's doing it because he loves you and he trusts you and he wants the best for you. Know that he wants the best for you and he wants you to, to pass it on to others and to rise others up because the time is at hand, my friends. Jesus is coming. Amen. He is coming. And we will see and we will usher in yes. his presence. Yes. Amen. Take it seriously, my friends, yes. because time is now. Amen. And we are so blessed to be a part of that generation that will usher in the Savior. Amen. Understand that we are a chosen generation. Amen. We are a chosen generation. We have been saved Amen. for this time because we are valiant spirits, because we are strong, because we are courageous, because we are bright, because we have something to offer. We were sent here for a reason, to draw others into the family of Christ and to be a body and to be unified and to be strong and courageous and bold and bright and beautiful. Amen. Let's stand up and do that. Let's stand up and rise and be who we are meant to be. And not to be ashamed of that, not to hide our light, not to cower, not to wither, but to stand in the light of our Savior who paid a price for us, Amen. such a dear price. Be glad in that fact because we're worth it. And we're worth it because he already knows that we're going to become the people that he sent us here to be. So walk in it. Enjoy it. It's a beautiful ride. It's a beautiful ride and it's such an adventure. So, amen. amen. Daniel. Yeah. Oh, praise God, man. <laughs> it's such an honor and a privilege to be here in the house of God. Man, I'm telling you, this place has saved me. I thank Pastor Wall for the opportunity to be here. I thank God for the Green Berets. Green Berets, you're awesome. I love you. I love all the disciples, the most I love the saints of the most high God. So, you know, Pastor Wall just, you know, I love it. The man is just fresh with, you know, wisdom and just beautiful creative ideas. And he's just building a people. He's building a people. He's making disciples, you know, to go into all the land, to teach everyone, to observe God's ways. And that's what we're here about. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to be before you long. Um, he just said to really speak something that's in our heart. And it's funny, I'm hearing the theme, praise God for Aaron, and bringing in the Avengers to go forth and take the land. And Aaron is one. He has a, you know Aaron, he a, has a different spirit like Caleb did. He will go and take possession of that land. So, and we have, you know, her just talking about rising up. And I'm going to read a little bit, actually, what God gave to me. I'm going to go to Matthew 22. Won't be before you very long. Matthew 22. And we're going to go to verse 15. Matthew 22, verse 15. And it reads, Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? 
Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought, they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, Whose image is on this, and whose inscription? Caesar, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. You know, that's something that the Lord has really pressed hard on me. You know, if I sat here and said, like, man, like, you know, what would the Lord speak into his people? If what, what, what did God press upon my heart? You know, I was reading over even in Isaiah 6. He's like, who would go? He's calling a people to go. You know, I feel that the Lord is really, I named this real quick, and it's called Returning the Belongings of God. Returning the Belongings of God. He looked on it. I asked Luis, I said, Luis, give me $5. He was like, give me $5. I don't have much money. Give me $5. And Luis gave me $5. And I looked at it, you know. There's an inscription on There's an image on it. Yeah, you know, looked at it. It looks real. We got an image of, we'll say this seizure, but he's Abraham Lincoln, you know, it's real. And they were coming and trying to trick him with something like this. He said, what's on it? Well, it's the image of the government, image of the world. Give back to the world what is the world, but give to God what is God. And I look out in the audience, and there's an image that transcends space and time. We were fearfully and wonderfully made. We were made after the very image and likeness of God. And if he was here, he would say unto us, return back to the world what belongs to the world, but give back to God what belongs to God. We are not owned of ourselves. We are bought with a price by the precious blood of the Lamb. But unfortunate to sin. Sin came and it just deteriorates the image of God in our life. Where we look like into the spiritual Caesar. There's a spiritual Caesar going on. There's only one Pharaoh of Egypt. And we don't rule nothing in his world. There's only one emperor of Rome. And it's still that spiritual Caesar. And he's trying to get and imprint his image on all of us. Getting us lost out in sin and iniquity and all this rebellion. But I looked at something. I looked back at that $5. I can spit on it, do all kind of stuff, crumble it up, throw it on the ground. Don't run up here and kill me for this final. This is Luis's, it's not mine. But then I look at it, and in all of this that I've done, spit on I could have took a big old, you know, anything, just rubbed in all kind of junk. And it still holds a value. The natural thing, the worldly thing. So if I did this, how much would, you would, well, I put all this big old loogie on it. Bam, 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 here you go. It would still be worth how much? I said, well, if this is true of the worldly thing, look at what sin, that's what I was like, how, I, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. What was God seeing? For he so loved the world. We're in our iniquity. It's like he can see past everything. In view of the blood and the propitiation of Jesus Christ, he saw a people worth dying for. And God was here today. He would say like into Isaiah, who would go? Who would go and return to me the vessels of my holy temple? We are all individual, even together, you know, corporate, one big vessel. We are one body, but as Mr. Wayne puts well, we are all single organism of one body. If the monetary things of this world, which is depreciating as we speak, has not lost its value, then nor have us. God sees a greatness in us. He desires his things to surface. This is why the gospel is so beautiful. For the, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the very power of God into salvation to those that believe it. You look at the word power in Greek and it's dunamis. Our derivative of dynamite. The gospel, see, sometimes stuff just got to blow up, right? Someone, and we hold the very bomb of God. The very dynamite of God to go out into all the world and to share this thing. That we can return into God, his vessels. We can return to God. What is God's? Give back to the world what belongs to the world. But God is here. He wants what belongs to him. He says, let us go down and make man in our image. and our likeness. The likeness of God is returning. It's happening right here. Right in the midst of all of us. We are surfacing this thing. And we're going out and preaching this dynamite of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're rendering this gospel into all the nation. And to all the land. One soul at a time. So you know the Lord is really pressing on my heart. It's a day and an age. That he wants everything that is him. Everything marked. If I went over there and said ooh. What you got on? Look at that. It looked nice. It has a marking on it. And it gives a value. Everybody wants that coach. And some of it, you know, is not coach, it's poach. It's a limitation, it's not even right. Everybody wants this. 
But look at that. Caesar, the spiritual Caesar is coming and intervening and trying to get us all confused. Getting us away from the marvelous glory of the gospel, which is a light. He's given us this charge. But see, we've been forfeiting it to other people. Oh, this is just for the pastor. This is just for the teachers, the preachers. This is a charge on all of our hands. We hold a responsibility as the saints of the living God to go in all the land. The Bible says in Romans 8, the very creation is yearning for the appearance of the sons of God. Many people think this is a future off thing that's going to happen. See, I've learned that eternal life starts the moment. You know the one and true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. We hold this power. Right now we can experience eternal life. Right now we can birth the world into eternal life. But it doesn't start when you die. It starts the moment you come to know the true image of God. Colossians 1, 15 and 16 says that Jesus Christ is that image of the invisible God. And we hold his gospel and share his good news. But the Father says, who will go? Who will go and return unto me my belongings? These are, we are his belongings. Who will go into all the world? Baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching all to observe all these commands. And lo, he'll be with us always. Even into the ends of the earth. I leave with you this message. Well, before I even close, actually my last thought. We don't need to stop, stop fighting to keep his law. You know, the laws, we have certain ways of Caesar, but there's certain ways in the spirit. We have to stop fighting to keep his law, but instead learn to love him and see if you don't start keeping and really understanding his law of love. Psalms 119 says, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Psalms 119, 114 says, you are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light into my path. I seek you with all my heart. Do not... Let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And great peace have those who love your law. For nothing and nothing can cause them to or make them stumble. God wants this to be rebirthed and revived. And we're doing it. We hold the responsibility to take the gospel of Jesus Christ in all the land. And that's the burden. If you said, what would God say? What would he want of you? I believe he'd reiterate what we just read in verse 21. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But render unto God what is God. We belong to God, saints of God. And we need to go into the world and gather up all of God's blessed possessions. All of his belongings that are lost. All of them. I just feel like, for whatever reason, I didn't see it. I didn't study it out in that way. But how even the vessels was taken from the temple. And the joy that David had. The joy that King David had when those things were being returned. That's the same joy that we must have when we see the images of God being surfaced again. If the very earth is groaning for the appearance of the sons of God, then we likewise should all the angels, the Bible says, rejoice at the repentance of one sinner. we got to get about this game. Pastor Walt held a heart for the lost, and we are church on the street, to go out into all the land and to render back into God what belongs to God. Jumping Bill, get that old guitar up there. Uh -oh. Somebody move this thing out of the way. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, just, just a few more minutes. It's going to be a short service tonight. Unbelievable. Yeah, somebody here. I'll, I'll hold this one for them. Yeah, he probably, we probably don't need it. But. <laughs> oh, Father in heaven, let us worship you. In Jesus' name.
night these yeah. wonderful saints of God who preached the gospel they chose to preach the gospel the worship team yeah. that chose to sing about Jesus we thank you God that these men and women in this room are so faithful to you and they taste and seen that the Lord is good and they want the Lord no more of this old junk it's not true it doesn't bring life it brings death but Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God, we thank you for that life. In Jesus' name. Oh, please, go out and love somebody, man. Love as many people as you can and share Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.